what I think we should do today is we're going to move on with the vectorize, the high speed programming next. But what I want to show you is because if these strategies have really low correlation to each other, yeah, we could actually put them in a portfolio and we could see if we can, in fact, build a portfolio of strategies which can then actually have a higher sharp ratio than our benchmark. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's give this a try. So all we need to do is see, see we've got this this back test here, which is um, um you know one ninety five, and then let's choose the other the other strategy again. So so we could do like uh, D one um, P one equals back test spy and then um you know we have 250 and then um we do another one with two and we just go okay um instead of two we go five uh right mm -hmm. we just all we mustn't forget is we just basically go negative. So we're basically running these two back tests, okay? And then what we do is we take the results, we combine them, and then we have a look at uh, what the sharp ratio is. And and maybe, just maybe, it's not too bad. Uh, let's just see. So we run these. All right, so they're done, okay? And so how do we combine them? So they're basically uh, two sets of returns now um one thing uh we could do is we could just wrap them in an array and then you know maybe we call that combined com equals we can't just do this with um lists but we could do this mp array p1 here mm -hmm. and then don't forget the other one is negative. So mm -hmm. we go n minus MP array P2, yeah? Mm -hmm. So now we have com, right? And then what we can do is we can go mp.mean com divided by mp.std com times do you remember the number that we need to multiply it with? 16. Yeah. <laughs> cool. 16. Let's see. Well, look at this. Wow. 0 0.85. Now that's a huge improvement to what mm -hmm. we've had before. Now let's see if we can, let's just plot the PL of this. Um, so all we have to do is plte.plot. Um, and then we go um we can just choose D1 or D2, and then we go mp.cumulative sum. Com. Yeah. So, well, it's, you know, bit bit different. Now, one thing is, you know, we, we actually combined them. Uh, so, so they work a little bit in a in a different way than than before, but that's that's all right. So uh, what we could also do, obviously, is plot the benchmark along with it. So let's just uh, grab this, and finally, we'll plot against the benchmark, and there we go. Wow. That's our strategy. Mm. Now, the interesting thing is. Mm -hmm. It will actually be sometimes, um, you know, because in one strategy we might go long and the other we go short, there will actually be quite a, a lot of times when it's when it's zero, right? When it's mm -hmm. not trading. So so that's an interesting uh, one. But as you can see, we're having a significantly higher risk adjusted return for the strategy and mm -hmm. it's actually performing quite a bit uh, quite a bit better than before. Yeah. So there's a few caveats to that. One is that um, when we, we actually sometimes, because sometimes they're both positive, we're adding two strategies. So technically, 
you know, the returns might be inflated mm -hmm. if we assume the same amount of cash being in the strategy. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we, you know, might have to may have to address in a more precise back test. But let's just uh, let that go for now. Funny enough, if we divide this whole performance by two, it will in fact still be the same sharp ratio. So um, if we go, um, and this is pretty obvious, if we just, just divide the, the returns by two, mm -hmm. the sharp ratio will still be the same, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the important thing. By combining uncorrelated strategies, we're actually achieving a better sharp ratio. Mm 